What's happening everyone, welcome to the Legged Podcast. Before this show starts, I just want to take a minute and tell you all about the secret perks you get if you sign up on Patreon. Now to sign up on Patreon, it is a pound a week, that's it. And by doing so, you get early access to all our guests. You get an extra episode on a Wednesday that is only available just for Patreon members only. On a Saturday, we do a betting show where we've landed some pretty big bets, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, cross footy and boxing and MMA. We do live events, quizzes, you get early access to all them, and anything else we've got going on, it all comes to you first for those who support on Patreon. No better time to sign up. We've got about 100 episodes, maybe, of uh, Patreon episodes, which are hilarious, if I do say so myself. All there available for you now. Get signed up. It's a pound a week, and we'll see you over there. Right, welcome to the Legged Podcast. A uh, bit of a bonus episode. <laughs> Are we on a podcast or a sportscast? Um, I don't actually know where this will go in. I mean, if you're on the podcast, <laughs> it'll start getting all deep in that. But, um, yeah, a bit of a bonus episode with Jazza, Seamus, Seamus, what is it? Seamus O'Dickens. Seamus O'Dickens, yeah. <laughs> it's a that. But yeah, we've, um, when Andy went mysteriously away, <laughs> loads of people had said, get Jazza on to do the sportscast. So I thought, I won't ring you every week to come, <laughs> to come in. But... I'll get you on, me and you can talk about boxing for a bit, it'll go out as a bit of a bonus episode and to be honest, just trying to talk boxing with someone, Cool. talking yeah. to a fucking brick wall with Andy when Yeah, I like, I like your inside, your inside George, you know, to, be, um, to combat sports, oh, I, I've asked you before, I'm like, how do you know what you know about it, because you've got a good um, insight to how it works and stuff like that. You know what, it's like, I think as we said it on the podcast, the last podcast we've done, it's just, I was speaking to him, um, I was actually did the thing with Stephen Smith the other day, separate from this podcast, but we sat and spoke to him. I was talking to him about it, and he was like, oh, how did you get into it if you didn't box or compete? And I said, I watched Jamie Moore, Matt Macklin, right? And at yeah. this point, I was um, quite deep into football. Yeah. Like, and I, I'd, my dad had been a big like Tyson fan and like and all that stuff, and I grew up with all that. Just being scouts, you, you, there's some boxing books or yeah. something in the house, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. Anyway, I, wa- I watched Jamie Moore, Matt Macklin, like a replay of it in my granddad's. And I was just like, what What have I just oh. watched? And I, and then I wanted the box after that, but my mum was like, well, my dad as well, they were like, you you know, you want to, you're close to getting somewhere with football, yeah. like, focusing on that, and look at them now, could have been, could have been you, that. That's <laughs> <laughs> could have been you. Look like you had a nose all over the place. <laughs> That's the thing, isn't it? T- 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 my my uncle told me it was one of the, uh, you could do both. Mm. <laughs> I remember being a kid saying to my dad when I got into boxing, what am I going to do? That's how, like, how's it going to work? He said, t- 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 you'd be a boxer of a night and a football player <laughs> of a day. <laughs> so he, he just kept me going on both and um, got to 14 and swerved it, but it really is one or the other, isn't it? Yeah. I think at a certain level, because like, I think what my parents were getting at to me is like, are you just going to go down the boxing room because you liked it on telly? Yeah. You know, if you go in half-hearted, yeah. someone's going to pan your head, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But where, where I lived in Eighton, obviously it's why I knew Luke Willis and stuff, there was loads of boxing gyms around me, but it was a bit of a separation in, in terms of like, what path you go down and yeah. I do a little bit of work now with um, younger people just fr- through my own career yeah. when so when I stopped playing football I had a bit of a rough time like an identity thing so I work with them now to like yeah. say to them and I always preach like keep your options open do you know what I mean don't 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 like you have to be dedicated to a certain certain mm. degree obviously in boxing you yeah. certainly do but you have to also understand that there's plan B's and plan C's and if you're not I understand like there's certain points where someone's just a freak of talent and they just got to focus. But I just wish I would have opened the eyes to the world a little yeah, bit earlier, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Little, just I'm a little bit earlier, just because I think, I actually think it would have complimented me. That's the sensible advice to give, mm. isn't it? I'm in the other company where it's all, all in. All or nothing, yeah. Or just go all in. I think you have to be because you've made it as a professional. I think you've got to be delusional, yeah. haven't you, as yeah. well? A party's got to be delusional. I remember the teacher being in isolation in school and the teacher saying to me, what do you want to do when you're older? And I'd already been asked this before. Mm. And when I saw the answer, I want to be a boxer. The teacher just shut me down and said, no, yeah. you're not. You need a job. And I remember saying to the teacher, I'm going to be a drug dealer. You <laughs> 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 know what I mean? I just, I just lost it. I couldn't handle yeah. the rejection of where it's going to be. But I just said, I'm going to be a drug dealer. And looked it, looked it in the eye. <laughs> and she said, not going to be. But that for me was safer than yeah. getting shut down. Yeah. I mean? yeah. But in my head, it was, I knew I was going to be a boxer. Do you know what, though? I think both sides of the arguments have, have serious points. Because someone who's made it to what you wanted to do you 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 will live and proof that if you dedicate yourself you can get there yeah. whereas i reached a certain point and was then told i was no longer good enough so yeah. my life experience would be you know f- focus but understand that the world's a big place course, do you know what i mean yeah. and i think both of them are right but i think what some people get to is and this is quite harsh this and i don't really know how to say it to people but some people are never going to be good enough to make it in what they want to do do you know what i mean yeah. and yeah. i think sometimes the world pressures you into a point where you're like 
I've got to get, I've got to get that. I've got to be that. Yeah. You know, well, football especially, done. like, yeah. you know, at 16 years of age, I think the actual figure is 0.05% will ever get paid out of the game in an under-18 wow. squad. Do you know what I mean? So it's less than, <laughs> most teams, it's less than one. Wow. So, like, I think there's a very, very fine line between dedication in a team sport, yeah. I'm saying this is, dedication and delusion. You know yeah. what I mean? There's a very fine line between my, it. My best mate says to me, Paddy, he always says, like, you're going to get someone killed one day. You know what I mean? Because I say, yeah, you can do this. <laughs> People want to box. I say, go for it, lad. Yeah. You've got nothing to lose. But he says, you're going to get someone killed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> so, yeah, as I said, I could. There's a fine line between no, the, the, <laughs> life and the death. The 100% is because if you go too far the wrong way, like if you go too far to what I'm saying, it's like, don't try anything. Don't try and be anything. Don't yeah. try and be anyone. You know what I mean? Whereas of course, all yeah. it is, I think, and I think it's something you only learn as you get older, unfortunately. Yeah. It's just balance, isn't it? Yeah, I went to a balance. That's mm. why I've, I'm right over that side. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have to equip yourself with certain skills to like, because we see it all the time and it'd be a good conversation to have with you. I love combat sports. I hate when people retire because I hate seeing people I respect. And, yeah. you know, there's something in the news at the minute with Kel Brook and there's like, I hate seeing people that have adored or whatever and then you see them and they're in a bad yeah. situation you know what I mean because yeah, hard, they've it? never yeah. known anything else you yeah. know I think from the outside looking as well though people don't ask why is he fighting again no or why is he do? why is he out like you've seen your man the other day fucking Kel Brooks or whoever done that the f- motherfucker who sent that video out to Kel yeah. Brooks why is he doing that people don't ask that do you no. think people just say what the fucking hell why is he doing that if I was in his shoes yeah. I'd be doing this and that if <laughs> I had his money my problems would be gone yeah I mean, it's mad, isn't it? that's the biggest delu- t- we've said the word a couple of times that's the biggest delusion though yeah. because I think um, I think Tony Bell, you actually mentioned it somewhere. Um, no other profession apart from yours or other slightly different individual sports can you be retired at mid thirties? Do you mm. know what I mean? And then yeah. one day you you're a boxer and you go in the gym and you got everyone around you. Yeah. The next day you wake up in yours yeah. and you're like, what yeah, well, now? I've <laughs> been standing in Tesco before. And I've had like <laughs> I've been on a two fight lose streak in the past. Well, one time in the past. I'm being in the Tesco and people say, oh, aye, lad, he, he retired now, are you? Mm-hmm. And I've got a fight coming up, you know what I mean? It's painful, it's hard, because your identity is attached to that, you know yeah. what I mean? Basically, the same thing, aren't you? Are you not, not good enough? It's like, let me move on, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that can be hard, but well, you've got to be, um, you've got to, got to have a firm grasp on your own reality, yeah. you know what I mean? What, what are you capable of now? What situation are you in now? Mm-hmm. And can you still do it? You've got to be realistic. I remember when, I think it was that fight, when you fought Kid Galahad, Yep. I remember the tweets after that on the night, so yep. you wouldn't have seen him. Yep. Jazz has got to call it a day now. Yeah, he's, he's, that's it. his second time as a challenge for the world title. Nah, he needs to get out the game or whatever. And yeah. I think for for people like me or general, it's easy to just sit and type in it. But yeah. imagine someone walking up to you and going, "You need to fuck your job off," you know? Yeah. You go 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 and, go and crack on something else. It's it's not it's not normal. Yeah. It's a bit of a mad one, isn't it? Because what 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 me and you say about a fighter now, if me and you really don't agree that a fighter should be carrying on. When we meet a fighter in reality, we we, we will say, "When's your next fight?" Yeah. Always oh, right, is right, and you pat the back. You don't mm. you just do it, and say, you're not going to be a cunt, are you? And I don't think that's a slimy for not telling you how it is it's just not their place to give you their honest opinion you yeah. know what I mean so it's like what what, what what can you do you can't blame them either you know what I mean because yeah. they're not going to just be walking around telling people you need to swear it you need to swear it you need to swear it <laughs> I'm sound yeah. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work like that yeah. does it but then social media does yeah Social media can be dangerous, can it? Because what you write on there, you can never take it back. No, you can't. As I know a few times, I, I think I've... I, 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 <laughs> I get like 10 likes on a post. I've got thousands of followers get like 10 likes and I think I've been... What's it called? Shadow ban, is it? Yeah, yeah. Can- <laughs> cancelled like Andrew Tate. Yeah. <laughs> get jazz enough to it. So I think, I don't know, things I've said out there mm. in the past that it's just don't... Yeah. What I don't agree with, genuinely, I'll never take that opinion back because I agree with it, but... Yeah. Just the way it is, isn't it? Can't I think I had something the other day. Um, we'll come on to like what's going on in boxing in a minute. But I had something the other day when after Better BF beat Yard, I said I'd love to see the Callum Smith out of Better BF fight because I don't yeah. believe the Bivol fight will ever get made just promotionally in that. Yeah. And someone who who will like and respect Jamie, a lad, he come back about how Callum Smith couldn't win, and we had a little bit of a debate, and it was sound. Like we know each yeah. other. It was it was you know we said we disagree, but we had a debate. Yeah. But then the people that get involved, it's just mad. It's like. I think someone said Callum Smith shit his pants every time he stepped I'm thinking what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> are you on about do you need five champion in the world she, yeah so not only that but like obviously you know people can he got beat by Canelo or whatever but that was his actual statement 
every time Callum Swift stepped up, he shit his pants. And I'm thinking to myself, why am I on this? Like, why am I listening? I'm oh. reading this stuff because it just makes you dumber. It makes you feel stupid. Do you know what I mean? But I, I, like you were saying with social media, then it's not my place to say to the, whoever said that from whatever account, yeah, yeah. you're an idiot. I, but yeah, you know everyone, wouldn't you? It's, it's like, if, if Callum Smith has got to justify himself, then we're all screwed, aren't we? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because... Why does he just swear at Cal? <laughs> <laughs> That's essentially what he was saying. Ah, just do it. He shit himself. Your man there he left Everton the other day. I put a Andy comment Gordon, on yeah. yeah, I put a comment there as well, like, saying good luck to him. I didn't like the way he left. I thought it was... I'd never not turn up to saying that. As a yeah. professional, I think it was childish, and I think, how the fuck are you supposed to get, out, get away with that? But then, I know I'm on the outside of the club. If a kid who's given his whole life to Everton Football Club says, I'm not going in there today. What's going on? What's happening? I understand that the people outside the game and all that. <laughs> <laughs> They're just scouts. Yeah. If he's one of us, he can take that shit, you know what I mean? You should take that I shit. Would. You know what I mean? You've got to take that shit because yeah. you're one of us. But what's going on, the reality of it is, I put on, like, good luck to him because whether it kills me to say it or not, good luck to him because yeah. when he was a little kid and then... Well, the kids are playing man hunt or playing in the park, playing football with your mates. He was running after the ball for Everton. Mm. And that's the reality. Thank you for what you've done for the club. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but it's hard to see that at the, at the time, isn't it? Like this, but that's what, as an athlete, I've seen it. But on the other side of the fence, I see exactly what everyone's yeah. saying. People give me a bit of shit about it online. But I thought, nah, that's the truth. Mm. The two, there's two truths, isn't it? No, 100%. And I think the thing with Gordon is the way he's handled it, I mean, I'm not sure how much control he actually had over that, but mm. like the way he's handled it's incorrect. But in his career, like this is the cold hard truth of it. His career, he's currently playing for a team that could drop out of the division, and a team that are probably in the most exciting Enjoy, position. Enjoying this, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> People are in the this, most right? exciting yeah. position in the cl- in the yeah. league. Newcastle got mad owners from like Saudi yeah. or something. No. If that comes knocking on your door, it's very hard to say no. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. To go, yeah. oh no, you know what? I'll uh, yeah. I'll jib it because, like, at the end of the day, we're all we all go to work to mm. to push ourselves, don't we? To to be, get to the top of yeah. where we. He's uh, been a blue all them years, and he's seen people like my mate Jerry Kinsella just drop off. Mm. Everton Football Club say, "Don't need you, don't need you, don't need you," and let the best ones go through. But now it's his chance to do the same. Mm. If he's supposed to be loyal to the club, who's not gonna be loyal to him because he's seen time and time again it's not it's no. not about loyalty as a football so the only loyal people are the people who unfortunately the people who pay to go yeah everyone yeah. else in the game and is that's why we've got the perspective of yeah. you're rat, you're rat, yeah. 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 that's why we've got because we would mm. we're thinking about what we would do in that situation yeah nice. it's it's such a tough one but i always feel like again not to bang on about myself but i always feel for people like him because when he's like where he isn't now, I think he's like, was he 22, 23 or something? He's never really been exposed to being an adult yet. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. got, he's gone through and, yeah. you know, he's got launched into this crazy life. No matter how much dough he's got or what, how much time he's been yeah. on the telly, it must yeah. still be hard to, for people like stopping your car and, yeah. you know, saying all this stuff about yeah. you. It's, it's, it's hard There's to some deal small with. small percentage of adults in life that can prepare you with good, good advice, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. To be an adult, never mind the lifestyle he's got to live. Yeah. How many such a such a small percentage? You know they're all living around him, but how many of them have got it right? Don't I mean so? Yeah. Is he ever gonna have the ability to be to live properly with no. the lifestyle he's got in front of him? Know what I mean? It must be so hard, must not it? And that's yeah. what we don't think to be. If I had this money, I'd be happy. But then what? Are you gonna get that money? But are we gonna keep all that money? Yeah. Are you gonna sort your finances? How are you gonna? You know what I mean? How are you gonna see who's now your friend because you've got money? How are yeah. you gonna see the, the the partner that you meet? Is this because she loves you, or is this because that yeah, you, you are in your eyes? Yeah. It's, 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 it's a minefield, isn't it? I think that's why, like, you know, I think um, people were saying it about... I actually spoke to Rocky Fielding when we were at um, Smith McQuinio, which was at the, the Echo Arena, and he, he was coming back at that time to fight. He eventually fought Dan Aziz, anyway. Yeah. But he, he was saying then, like, loads of people said to him, like, after the Canelo fight, oh, you're flying? Like, you're this, you're that. Like, and then he's like, well, yeah, I've just fought Canelo, but, like, I'm only... I'm like, I think he was like 31 at the time. Yeah. He's like, I still want to box. I still want to yeah. keep going. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, everyone's just in his head. Like, they got this crazy thing that once the dough comes, yeah, it's done. You're done. You're sound. You're flying. Yeah, it's just there. not. It's just not. I know we all want financial security. I get that, but there's so much more to life and to sport really than to, yeah. just getting a paycheck and then being like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, so. If you're in the gym twice a day every day and on the weekend, weekend you rest with your family. 
what do you do when there's no fight coming up? Yeah, no yeah. one knows, no one tells you. No one tells you what to do. I've had some good advice off of, um, off Tony Belly and myself, being my manager, put me into property and stuff like that, things to do with the money. Why else you've got it? Because once you stop fighting, you don't get paid if you're yeah. not fighting. So if you're earning a good pay, pay day, that's what you've earned today, but people assume that's what you continue to <laughs> earn. You don't earn another penny unless you fight again, you know what I mean? Mm. So it's not like <laughs> with boxing, it's like your money is just, there's just a cup, a bag of money with a hole in it. That's yeah. it. It's just constantly going out and you need to keep on filling it up, you know what I mean? By fighting. That's yeah. the only way you can fill it up. And that's why you, people say, why is he coming back? Because this lifestyle that he's accumulated yeah. over the years, it's not going to pay for itself. Mm. Who's going to pay for it, you know? I think that's where, I think that's, you know, zoning in on boxing. I think that's something that the sport has got to like strike a balance with. But unfortunately no you're, you're you're self-employed aren't you no one's no there's no you there's no union there's nothing like this but i seen something the other day uh, austin strout was fighting um bare knuckle and like he was just getting he got chinned i think and like you're thinking the, the everyone can say don't fight bare knuckle and don't do this and don't do that but as you rightly say then if that's how you've earned money for the yeah. and then someone comes along and says there's a payday to do this yeah naturally you're gonna yeah. you're gonna accept it aren't you austin Strout can handle that more than the next man he goes, have you seen that? Austin South yeah. driving the taxi. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? yeah. He can handle that more, and that's mm. just the way it goes, isn't it? So, yeah, it, it's, it's just easy to judge, isn't it? And from from the position of like a working man, who he's got he's got a cheek to even talk about how hard it is without finances and stuff like that. But yeah. it's the life that he's created, and he has to sustain it because yeah. he's got kids he needs to make happy and. He needs to look after his family, doesn't he? And this yeah. is the lifestyle they used to. These kids aren't from the world that he might be from, so therefore he has to maintain a lifestyle that yeah. they're living, that they're being brought into. People just don't see that or accept that because they don't understand that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe for me, I, I don't understand some people's lifestyles, but I definitely understand I'm far away from where, where I was from. But I understand the responsibility. It can be tough to maintain a lifestyle for your family that, that you never had, you know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. you can accept, you can just live how you always did. Mm. <laughs> you've lived on both sides of the fence, but when you've got kids who are used to one way, you have to maintain yeah. a lifestyle, don't Mate, you? you you're 100% decent. The kids are so honest, aren't they? Like, I think, uh, <laughs> lad, honestly, <laughs> God, my, my kids just have me off all the time. Like, the um, where I where I live now is not a, st- like a million miles away from where I grew up. Yeah. But like, I even see like, when you drive the kids, like, sort of back where I grew up, you can see the face, like, as if we live in like Florida or something. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, but they just don't, they, they just don't like it's literally 10 minutes down the road, but they don't, it, yeah. to them it's just like they they can't hide the fact that I've never seen this before. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They're just yeah. like, wow, this even, is mad. Even like the way of life has changed. Like, yeah, yeah. Like bullying and not that bullying is good, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but like you could do things back then. I was telling my kids last week a story about great story <laughs> story tell, t- tell anyone I can this story about <laughs> filling the ball with bricks in school yeah yeah to, the, to one of the kids and again and again and he, and he, and he didn't and he, no one plays with this kid and he's yeah. like this is me moment and he ran to the ball and oh. volleyed the ball and I think he broke his foot and he fell over the floor and I was looking at the kids waiting for the laugh and he went why does it <laughs> what do you mean the world just changed in that oh, moment mate, why would you do that <laughs> <laughs> they haven't got the imagination anymore. <laughs> but yeah, there was. I mean, the world is for them like just a com- completely different place. Like you can't do nothing, can you? No, no, you, you literally can't. Like it's just the thing is though. Like I was saying this to me um, to my wife the other day. So my little lad now does martial arts yeah. and he um, he's karate and kickboxing. But I put him in there because he's not a naughty kid. Like he very well behaved in school and that. But he does have a lot of energy. Yeah. And I said to me, Mrs. When we had energy. Me and my eyes say go out and like, yeah, but, get out, like, yeah. <laughs> like get out the house. Yeah. But with him, I like found him a class and like was like right, get into martial arts and learn. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. whereas we just said the ass five, get out, get yeah. out my sight. I know suppose know I mean? that's what parents who lived a better life yeah. were just doing yeah. back then. When yeah. they would they would hear the years yeah. ahead of us. But you know, like I the, the thing is now I couldn't really. I don't know if I'd be able to even trust saying to me lad. Like I know he's, he's only yeah. five at the moment, but I wouldn't really be able to say go out. Yeah, Whereas yeah. when we were kids, my brother was talking the other day, because the reason my brother's an Everton fan is because we weren't allowed at a certain point in our estate without these older lads who were Everton fans, so we, yeah. he naturally became an Everton fan because he thought they were dead yeah, cool. Yeah. But like now, my, our parents were okay with that. They were like, go ahead, yeah. you know, go go and play, but don't do, like stay there with him or whatever. But now I, I, I'd be on toes. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I can't. Yeah, can't well, it, 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 all you hear is nonsense, 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 yeah, everything. It's the more nonsense or is there just more awareness? 
find his more. I don't mean there's more killers. <laughs> no, there's just killers everywhere. Or it's just the news. It's the it's the news on the present. Do you know back in the day, like people who watched the news was me nan and granddad, and we used to say turn this off. Now yeah. people like our age are on the phone going, oh, like yeah. the economy's crashing. <laughs> oh, <like that. laughs> oh, all right, Sam. Can we, can we go out? But it, it, it's, I think it's more, it's over information now, I think. Because even, yeah. even people who aren't nonsense are getting called nonsense. <laughs> 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 yeah, people on that internet, people on that internet, and when they lose an argument, that's it, you're a nonce. That's their last <laughs> line of defense, you're a nonce, you're a nonce, and you're a grass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's like the, there's like obviously some of them do good work, but there's like proper like like pedophile like hunters, and they yeah. get the wrong people and all. <laughs> oh my god, I'm mad! Why are you feeling this? It's a sting. <laughs> that's what they're saying. Oh. It's you, lad. I know you're the fellas you have fucking done it. <laughs> and a matter always carrying a like, cookie bag, Andy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's always the one even, you wouldn't even expect. Them, even them Peter Farrens as though, they get like, um, they don't get the rewards that they should get. They no, get no, like, they get, they, get, they get the naughty stuff for doing the work, don't yeah, they? Yeah. It's mad. mad. They get like, tr- like <laughs> I don't know, maybe I don't, I don't know how the police works. The ones who get like the that. right ones, like, are good, but there's a few. Not the wise, can I? Some fella oh. just being levered on Facebook for nothing. But um, there's something sweet about seeing them getting caught, isn't he? Oh. Although you can see the pain that they're in. <laughs> as, a, as a fellow nonsense. <laughs> no, although you can see the pain that they're in, there's something so sweet about seeing them, isn't it? I'm yeah, just, I I'm mean... Just, I'm just ruining this show, are they? I'm, I'm pulling it down, are they? No, no, no you couldn't pull this show any further down. We, we had a question the other day about... I mean, I've just been speaking to you off thing about Patreon. One of the questions was... And I don't fucking want you to answer it. Would no, you, no, please ask it, Ollie. <laughs> would you rather... <laughs> Would you rather power neck Elton John for two hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that one, yeah. Or just bum him once. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we had to deal with. Um, and I just went for the easy option of bumming him once. once. Yeah, just put his greatest hits on and go for it. How long are you bumming him for? Just till it's just over. Once? Yeah, what, just till it's once, over. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> you got to go to the end, like... <laughs> Yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> couldn't tell him for two hours. Yeah, but you could end up like, I don't like this, and you three hours in. You know what I mean? You don't just, because they're just next to <laughs> me. Well, I was trying to think of a question about P, the one to groups there. Well, I mean, yeah. Like what we're the saying. The closest thing you have, really. <laughs> yeah, but I think the, um, yeah, I think, as we sit going back, like, sending, I think the over information that we have to grow up in now, or kids have to grow up in. You can't just. There's no real way of just going like. Yeah, I said, get, get, that, get that off. If yeah. I if I come in the news is on, I think what <laughs> is the yeah. bad start of the day? Let's get it off. Yeah. What's his name? The fellow who argues with everyone. Doesn't like you talk. Piers Morgan. That's him. Yeah, just uh, can't <laughs> listen to him. So even when he's right, even when he's right, I he's think wrong. oh, you got a point there. But then I think oh, I just can't listen <laughs> to him. You know what I, mean? I think the other day, like me after the me me little lad turned um, five, so we were like around our house and, that, and my dad was sitting there. And, he went to bed, my dad was having like a glass of wine or something, and I could see him sort of racking things over his head, and he was going to me, I don't really want the kids to grow, but I hate the fact that they've got to start like, like knowing what the world's like. And obviously he'd had a, beat, a couple of glasses yeah. of wine or whatever at the time, but I, I was thinking, you know what, you've got a point. Like, yeah. you got, you now have to come into the, like, you have to, I guess you have to accept reality, don't you? But yeah. in their world, like, everything's just great, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just school, home. Yeah. Run around. It scares you, don't it? Yeah. I, I, I go away for work, so I could come back yeah, two yeah. weeks later and you see the things they've picked up whilst they're gone, yeah. you know what I mean? And you're thinking, have they grown a bit? It looks like they've grown a bit and yeah. stuff like that. I actually did. My eldest, who's 14, he's having a growth burst. So, coming back from um, camp, I think I was staying away from the week. He, I could see, he was taller than me yeah. before he, maybe he's had a big, one of them big cat wigs he's got, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. He's, he looked taller than me. Yeah. Bloody hell, it's mad. I just don't want him to. Nah, it's horrible. You scared, you're scared, don't you? Oh, I, mean, when, I think it's like. It's just reality, isn't it? Because when I, because yeah. on a weekend, for example, in ours, everything's like once you close your door or whatever, everything's yeah. great, isn't it? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. oh, it, yeah. everyone's dead happy and all that. And then, but once they start having their own problems and yeah. you know they start understanding like different things, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Uh, my my little ones, I worry for like for me with them. I'm like oh, I liked it this way, but my eldest, I really worry because he's fourteen. You have like detachment stuff now. Yeah. He just blanks your text. He doesn't want to know. You know what I mean? Mm. He's going out with his mates. He's not important anymore. So real worry. You know what I mean? What would yeah. happen if like 
what would happen if he's blanking me text? Is he blanking me text because he because he's not he's not bollocks anymore and he doesn't want to reply, or is he blanking me text because he's got into something problem and his yeah. phone's gone, yeah. or he's in the police station? And you don't know, do you? Know yeah. what I mean? Just answer me text. That's what you think. Just answer me text. But I do really worry for me for the for the oldest one. I can't imagine what it's like when he start going to town. I'm not oh. looking forward to that. He's, no, I'm not. I, I'm not looking forward to that at all because I know when I started going out at like, so I didn't really drink until I was like 19 years old. So mm-hmm. like, I'd, I, when I, when I, when I first started going out, I was a bit like, bit quiet and I'd, I'd shoot off. I still backdoor most nights out now, and I don't really yeah. go many now, but I backdoor them. But back then I used to do it. But then I remember as I got more confident with it, and I started thinking at that time going out was great. Yeah. Mate, I would, honest to God, like my mum or someone would text me, I wouldn't text them back for like six hours. Yeah. And but to me, it's like I'm out, leave me alone. But me imagine out. my mum must have been yeah. in the house, like, oh, what's going on? Do you know what I mean? That's not as a parent. No, I mean, I'm not, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. I'm whatsoever. seeing that now, the parent stuff that I, I dismissed as a kid, yeah, even the responsibility of a parent. Bloody hell, my man, they've done so much for me, yeah. Bloody hell, they were really good parents. Them, how did they do that in the situation that they were in and all that? You, know what I mean? That's a, d- you don't realize till you get older. Nah, it's humbling, you? isn't it? When yeah. you have to realize like that, you yeah. it's now your responsibility. And it makes me think, bloody hell, I was such ungrateful. I was so ungrateful, me because oh, like you think, yeah. bloody hell, I just I took that for granted. You know what I mean? That, mm. That's hard, that I'm doing it now, and I don't get no appreciation for it. So, yeah. therefore, was I that was I that ungrateful mm. person? You know, I think it's more like I think I, I always like to think of myself that I was like thankful for what my parents did to me and that but you do see things that like you know me especially my mum my mum used to work in like care and stuff so she'd be out for crazy hours yeah. but I never well I guess I'm not expected to but you never like sit there and go oh she must have worked hard there do you know what I mean to yeah. do to do you know but yeah. now when you're older you're like I mean I do like four hours work I'm like oh I need to lie yeah, down on the couch the <laughs> that's the last thing you think when you yeah. think more like where they gone why, yeah yeah why they got off yeah why have they got off yeah but um Going back to, to boxing and you, how's, how's things? Good? Yeah, very good. Been training, um, been in Dublin training for the last few weeks. Um, yeah, just hammering it, smashing it. Come on for the last uh, two days. Luckily, I was here when you said you want to come in and stuff like that. Mm. Um, been home. Last it's fight nice was, you want to come home. Last fight was October, right? When you got the, the, the IBO, IBO title. Yeah, yeah in the, in the Olympia. Yeah, mm. it was nice, nice fighting in the Olympia. Yeah. yeah. I've not been there since then, no. Haven't you? Have I not? Have I done not Have I? No. No, no, no. you haven't been no, in here since then. No, no wait, wait, the last time you were in was... No one come in, don't I? I normally have a, a, a fight going into the fight yeah. and, a, <laughs> yeah. and a debrief, yeah, don't I? I, do, I think it was... Um, I don't know, was it after the Galahad fight or not? I think it... I can't remember, but... I think we uh, you definitely haven't been in since you since you, since you won that... Um, yeah, it was a great little night. Um, yeah. Nice to win the title at home and stuff like that, especially like... Um, Put me back on a level where I can uh, f- fighting for world titles again and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Especially after you said there. Uh, like, um, did we say that before the pod or after? Or once we started after you, after you lost the world last world title fight. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. IBF, we... IBF world title fight was um, each your call of the day and stuff like that. Mm. It's mad and it's, it's nice to be back. Nice yeah, to just... prove people wrong, really. You know what I mean? When yeah. I when I get the compliments as well, it makes me feel a bit uneasy because I'm thinking about like like Club of Lang in the Rocky movies. <laughs> no, Rocky, Rocky's there. Um, He's, he's living fancy and stuff like that and there's always someone saying nah didn't yeah, he? so yeah, yeah I, I like it for the for weekend but then nice to get back to it mm. but it's been a while since we last fight I need a fight the landscape's changed though a bit hasn't it in a featherweight like obviously yes. you know following your fight with Kid Galahad he obviously has had a couple of tough losses but then obviously Warrington's dropped his Lee Woods being promoted from yeah. regular champion to super champion obviously yeah. that's a big fight that we'll talk about in a minute but it's it was what it felt like it was one of them divisions where it was locked down for a little bit, like yeah. there wasn't, and that. But now there's obviously moving parts, and you've got a bargaining chip in your title yeah. to hopefully shoe yeah. on into one of them big fights. Yeah, it's one. I mean, it was it would you rather be fifth in the rankings in one title or number one in the IB, IBO? Mm. It's one of them, isn't it? Like the thing with the IBO is, <coughs> you know, a lot. I know people don't see it as the traditional belt and all that stuff, but yeah, I, I think Golovkin yeah. used it in a in a very good way because yeah. he'd cut, he cut, he used it to shoe horn. Or the yeah. unified fights, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and I think yeah. that's the correct the correct way to yes. do because as you say, if you're fifth in the IBF, yeah. where you won in the I, th- there's a yeah. better chance of you getting a cross fight rather than a, yeah. a fight looking yeah. up. Do you know what I mean? If I was if I was I be WBO world champion, and I'm looking for the for the name, I've got myself a, a mandatory, not yeah. a volunteer, and I pick him. 
Would you, and everyone's in the, everyone in the list's good. Who would you rather fight someone in the top 10? You know you're going to get slack for like anyone outside the top 10. Yeah. Would you rather just call it a unification against the one with the IBO? Yeah. Mean, what would you rather do? He's in the top 10 anyway. You'd rather get something for it. Mm. So that's the situation Naturally you're more left money in. as well, isn't he? Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. the situation you're left in. You know what I mean? Everyone's a tough fight. Everyone's a world title fight, even though it's a volunteer. You're going to get loads. You're going to get slammed if you don't take it in. Um, a top defence and that's why they always you see the the promoters and the fighters they, they promise you the next one so they say like who are two top fighters in the division now you would like to fight mm. call it Tank Davis and Garcia what they do is if, if Davis wants an easy fight or Garcia wants an easy fight what they do they take the easy fight but they say this is because we're going to fight Tank next yeah, you know yeah. I mean? so they sell you the promise they get away with it now because they're going to give you the next time that's how it works you know what yeah. I mean so that 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 sort of like if you wanted a defense in the top ten, you might as well get something for it. That being yeah. the IBO, so we've got more of a chance of fighting. I think the good thing as well is I know there's like the likes of like Navarrete and sort of Lara who's fighting Wood, but there also is a little bit of a British sort of yeah. contingency in our featherweight, and the obviously yourself Warrington, <laughs> Keith Martin is essentially English now. Just yeah. comes over and <laughs> fights all yeah. the yeah. obviously Michael Conlon, Lee Wood, but. Yeah. Are they are they the fights you've you've got your eye on, or are you just looking yeah, for? Yeah, well, I've, I've called for everyone. I've fight yeah. openly on social media. I've called for Conor. I've called for Lee Wood, Warrington, um, all the British, all English, like, British and English lads. Yeah, mm. called for them fights, but not not seen to come of it. Um, and it's mad because I've never never been called out myself. No, even when I'm in my best position, like so now I don't get called out. It's mad. Maybe I mean like the who needs in club or what, but mm. um, I definitely know I've got. Uh, I'll beat them lads, you know what I mean? Yeah, I beat them lads again, you know what I mean? So even like we had we had it, everything in in England, it was it was great, and um, the, like you say, the lay of the land just changed, didn't it? So yeah. then it, it went. Warrington lost to a Mexican. Lee Woods fighting a Mexican. If he loses, it's gone. There's no there's uh, the IBO is the only title in England. Yeah. Um, the the the, the, the IBO is the only one in England, and then everything's in Mexico. Has Eddie Ain got control over the the boat Mexicans? Yeah, I think so. Well, I think he's definitely got options on them, but he's trying to build the Mexican yeah. part and back to so anyway, so him, him to take boxing to Mexico. He's yeah. got no loyalty to me or to any other English no. fighter. You know what I mean? You see, like um, Josh Warrington, he was his he was his best friend of many two years ago. Now he's yeah. now he's it's it's Lee Wood, isn't it? Yeah. So it's just business. You know what I mean? And he's got no loyalty, no fighters. So I think if if we need Lee Wood to win. Everyone need Lee, needs Lee Wood to win to keep the fight, the boxing yeah. over here, because um, if not, it's coming to Mexico. Mm. I think, obviously, Lopez, who beats Warrington, I think there's whispers, because he's top rank, isn't he? So yeah. that he'll maybe defend against Conlon. Yeah. But, so, but I mean, as you rightly say, then, like, if you if they do, I mean, personally, I think Wood versus Lara is a very difficult night for Lee Wood, because, just because of the way Lara... And I think the way Lee Wood, that Conlon fight was tacked somewhere, like, that's a bit... It's a, I didn't see the fight seen seeing the highlights mm. on the social media and stuff like that. I mean, but yeah, that Colin was winning the fight. He should have well he not should have won he he won ninety percent of the yeah, fight, yeah. did he? But it, I think well he dropped Lee very heavy early on and then gets dropped himself and then obviously stopped in the in the twelfth. But it was like for me one of the fights of the year, but I think like do obviously they were perfectly well matched, but I don't know whether he could do that again. Do you know Lee would go through and yeah. when you fight someone like Lara when you watch what he done with Warrington, it's yeah. not going to be an, it's not going to be a nice night, is it? You know what I mean? He's going to yeah. be, he's, he's not a fighter who's going to allow for a nice little technical boxing yeah. match. He doesn't know how to lose, does no. he? He's not going to want to lose. He, um, he's going to give it his all. And mm. you're trying to say, is Lee Wood willing to keep giving it his all? Mm. Keep going to the well. Um, that's something personal side Lee Wood. And I don't, what, what makes you say that? That he's not, he, he wouldn't be willing to go to the well? I don't, I don't know whether he'd be willing to. I don't know whether... At this stage, he would be physically able to do that again against yeah. someone like Lara. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I think th- that night, I mean, to get up the way he did is credit to Lee Wood. Yeah. Like, but yeah. he, I mean, he was a punch away from being stopped, and I don't know whether yeah. being stopped might have, you know, helped him a little bit. But then they go twelve rounds, and it's it's at a crazy pace and stuff like that. Yeah. And I just think sometimes you would see him maybe fight in a fight where not in his not would not, not stacked in his favour, but allow him to f- get back into the groove of things and then maybe do a brutal 12 rounder again but I just yeah. think watching Lara twice against Warrington he's not gonna yeah. he's not gonna allow Wood anything you know what I mean he's, yeah. he's gonna come for a scrap and Lee Wood for all like 
if anyone could criticise him, he's, he's game to have a fight, isn't he? Do you yeah, know what I mean? so if they say, like, if it's, if it's war after war, something's mm. got to give. Yeah. Uh, um, maybe, but it's, it's one of them, isn't it? How, how dedicated, what, what, yeah. what's the prize for him to keep going? You know what I mean, when you've got when you've got a family there in front of you, you've got to provide for, which I think he has. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? Who gives a fuck if I go to the well? If I get hurt, who gives a fuck? Yeah. I've got, I've got a family to provide for, a legacy to, to gain. There's, you can say like, <laughs> fighters don't see like the, the risks. No, what no. You no. see what Jordan? You know what I mean, from the outside, we don't think logically. We don't see the risks. We can't think logically, otherwise we'd never be in that position. I think that's why you use it. It's a barbaric as. sport if yeah. you think about it for what it is. If it weren't on the telly, it'd just be barbaric. Glad it's that's, all you know. Yeah, and. You've got nothing to lose. There isn't. There isn't nothing to lose in no. a, in a fighter's perspective. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> the real losing is if he does lose. Yeah. If he doesn't give it his all, and then he loses, then mm. what? What does he do? He's on the sites with the yeah. boys. You know what I mean? He's on I the sites with yeah. the boys, and that's it. He's having. The, he's living weekend to weekend like mm. everyone else, and he and he doesn't get to live this great life anymore. And he doesn't get to mm. provide the things that he wants to for his family. So, I think style. I think as a as a human or as a fighter, I don't think Lee Wood will ever go into it being like. Oh, I can't do this. I just think yeah. going back to back in a fight where Conlon's took you twelve and and hit you. Know, obviously, you've hit him and won. Fair play to him, by the way. Not yeah. you know, yeah. it was a great win in the end. But then to take obviously a year off and fight some, mean, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna be exactly well just under a year. Yeah, so wow. that was twelfth of March. This will be obviously eighteenth of February. So you're yeah. not far off a year. Uh-huh. And then you straight back into someone like Lara who. You know, again, it as I say, it doesn't take a genius to watch Mauricio Lara and understand what he does. Yeah. You know what I mean? He comes yeah. forward and he just yeah. tries to take your head clean off. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I think with Lee Wood style, he'll only oblige to that. Do you know what I mean? He yeah, just, he will. He, like, he won't. He, he will, yeah. He's a good boxer, but he's not going to stand and go, I'm going to turn this into a boxing match. Yeah. He, he's going to revert to Titan. He's supposed to fight Lara before, weren't he? Yeah. A few months ago. I mm. got the call. I was training Lara for about, for about um, a month for the fight. I got the call. It was, I knew it was me or Lara. Oh, really? They said, do you want to take the fight? It was me or Lara. And I was I was signing for the fight. Mm. Something like four or five weeks into the fight. And then they said, they announced it as um, Lara. Mm. With the wound. I found out on social media. Yeah. That's how brutal um, boxing is, you know what I mean? I found out, you're not fighting on social media. Yeah. I think that's it. I think that's Eddie in it. Like yeah. with the, as we just rightly. He's too busy. He needs to be yeah. sending me messages. Him message, mm. He's too busy. So it's just the way it is. I think there's part of him now that because he's put Lara in now twice with Warrington, and then I think there's a part of him that almost wants Lara to get hold of this belt because of the Canelo, Mexico putting shows yeah. on in Guadalajara and all that stuff. Yeah. He needs commodities for that market. You know what I mean? Yeah. He. he do we think he wants British boxing to leave Britain? I don't. I think I think he does love boxing. I think he loves it. Yeah, being around him because he can say Stop he's on. done a lot of the work and he has. But does he still win if if he takes that belt to Mexico with Lara? He makes that unification with the Mexican yeah. fighters, and then he also sees it as he can build another fight with Lee Wood and Josh Warrington in yeah. the Stadium because the pair of them have lost to what he'll say this super talent yeah. he's just right behind him and needs to get back into contention and he'll make a lot of money yeah. in the meantime you know what I mean so it benefits Eddie it's the old Don King thing isn't it him with the champion now with the champion regardless who yeah. wins like. like you're saying about YouTube fighters mate, like it's, yeah. it, it's ridiculous to some fighters who don't understand the game but so is promoting you know no. what I mean you can see Eddie standing behind two women two women think about this how barbaric this is <laughs> good old man <laughs> He's not getting punched once, and two women are going to fight, and he's going to make more money. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? No, that is barbaric. Not. That's just the way we live in. How smart is he for doing that? How smart mm. are these YouTubers? You know what I mean? They don't have to fight anyone serious, but they're making a lot mm. of money doing it. I think that's I mean? that's the bar. I mean, it's working smart, isn't it? It is. I think the the what I've seen about um, we we'll come back to you and Lee Wood and that, but what I've seen about the YouTube stuff is I got really uncomfortable with the lines being blurred in terms of like people calling it boxing. Do you know what I mean? And going like these are, I think Jake Paul at one point, although now he's fighting a licensed boxer with Tommy yeah. Fiori, but when people were saying like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to beat Canelo, and then he's like, I think KSI said something about another boxer. The, the lines being played yeah. was what annoyed me. Yeah. But when you look at business, what they're doing with this Misfits boxing thing where they're selling out the MEN, they're doing, yeah. I think they got their eye on the O2. Like, and I'm not, last year I don't think, I think there was about four or five big boxing events that actually sold out. 
Really? Do you know what I mean? And they, they're they putting wow. bums on seats. And then when you look at it from a broadcaster point of view, if you're yeah. sitting on a board of the zone, BT, Sky or whoever, yeah. you, all you are asked about is numbers, aren't you? You're like, of course, what's, yeah. what's yeah. bringing in the numbers? Business, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I think that's, what, that's the problem boxing has. But I do think now more people are going to get involved with or get on board yeah. with... You Here's know. why I, I don't mind it, Joe, because the, the YouTube boxing... Do you call it YouTube boxing? No, what, what, what else are you supposed to call it? Yeah. I mean? <laughs> what, like, don't call this boxing. <laughs> They're in there with gloves on, yeah. punching each other in yeah. the face. You know what, I mean? what, what are you supposed to call it? I get that. It's YouTube boxing, and they, and they have the respect to call it YouTube boxing. But they, they are a lot smarter than fighters because they've got a team around them that works. Yeah. A media team, which is everything. They've got somebody who, I don't know, the smart people. The smart, yeah. smart yeah. kids. You're just from a generation of you who understands how the the media works are probably a lot more than the actual media because this is their media youtube's their media they're selling their their product to t- television now and then going back to their mm. youtube and i mean they're very smart and who's on the undercards of these shows is it misfits is it all youtubers or yeah it's pretty much youtuber versus youtuber no boxes on there no no not not really but th- what they do is which is deciding the like geek in me has been looking into is they they all have their own youtube channel they all have outlets where they put out news about themselves yeah for example and all they do is just ramp it up all together at the same time and then suddenly you've got people going oh i know ksi is fighting this donut but there's a kid on the bottom i think there's a kid from dominican republic at the moment called him um, salt pappy his name is yeah and he actually there's like a rumor but he's cleverly denied it and then gone ah maybe where he's had like a hundred amateur bouts in like fucking philippines yeah. or something like right? and but now he's coming in just smoking all these <laughs> well like he's never he's very clever because he's never gone oh yeah i have or no i haven't what he does is, is he just keeps putting on training videos and everyone everyone's debating has he fought has he not yeah you know is he fucking packy kid or is he yeah. not do you know what i mean and wow. it, like it's it's clever because ultimately intrigue sells doesn't it if you it's yeah. like i went to I was in the MEN for Eubank first Smith, and the reason it was packed is because no one knows if if yeah. Eubank's going to win or Smith's yeah. going to win, and that's essentially what casual fans want to see. Yeah. Why don't they know who's going to win, though? It's probably because they haven't got a clue, innit? Yeah, yeah. And they're, selling the, the, they're getting the exposure to these people. Mm. Why isn't boxing getting exposure to these young kids? Yeah. Because last, last, like, Liam Smith's done amazing, didn't he? I didn't expect him to knock. I expect him to win. Yeah. Thought he was too cute at all. If if he did lose, if he did lose, it was only because of strength and size. size you know yeah. what I mean? But now that's an excuse for for you banking it. He's, he's got a bad time excuses yeah. anyway. He's done amazing taking him out the way he did. But why wasn't why isn't young kids get got the why why haven't these young kids got the interest and the mm. the excitement to go and see boxers? What is it about boxers that are so flat? Yeah. And boring to these kids. That's what we have to look at yeah. as fighters, you know what I mean? But, but, but why can't we connect to them? Because that's what the YouTubers can do, they connect. Maybe yeah. it's the way that we take... Yeah. Hey guys, like, subscribe <laughs> and leave a comment. Maybe you should start doing that. Just do that, that's how you get a two by <laughs> fucking IFL. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? That's just the way yeah. it is. Like, I think there's a lot to learn, mate, 100%. Yeah. Because we well, can learn from them. I don't think we should cast them out because no. we'll be losing all of we do. No, I think, yeah, if you can... If you can get to a point where, you know, you are learning from... You don't have to be them. But you can learn from them. You yeah. can create your own, yeah. create your own content, create your own media. Be around, be a face, be accessible, all that yeah. stuff. I think sometimes boxing gets on its like soapbox a bit. It's like you know, fight yeah. week. It's it, that's all that matters. Yeah. You know, press conference, weigh in, f- yeah. gloves are off, fight. Yeah. From because, the from the inside, you know that 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 week. It's so fuck. It's like what the fuck. Mm. So I'm going to a press conference to to sit there on a panel that no one's going to look at and no one's going to listen to, wouldn't you think I'd rather be doing something? Yeah. Or, or something that I'd rather do, or something fun even, just like, even going to do the media is bet- better because some questions get, some care- curveballs get thrown at you and you, you can laugh at it and you can throw, throw a different answer out there and stuff like that, but it's the same, same, same. Mm. You don't even watch them because you know what's going to happen. Yeah. You watch the you watch the highlights if someone throws a chair, that's it. Mm. But, I think what, I, I have a thing where, like, and I've said this to a few people, where, I think if you get an opportunity on the zone or Sky or BT or whatever, yeah. and you get a press conference, and I'm not saying do a Derek order and lamp someone or yeah. anything like that, but if you if you get the mic for ten seconds and you say, "Just want to thank Eddie for the opportunity. I've had the best camp of my life. 
Thank you. Yeah. Mate, the next lad says that as well. And yeah. They're like, what makes you think that anyone's going to remember who you are? Unless you yeah. are, you know, knocking everyone out like Joshua was when he was yeah. going through. But I think I don't think boxing understands that it's more about, it's not just about what you yeah. do in the ring. And, and a lot of people lack like charisma, don't they? Too? Yeah. yeah, 100%. And I think they look back and they go like, well, you know, Tyson used to just do it. Used to, and, and you're like, it's not the game you're in yeah. no more. You, yeah. Like To get on these big cards, you either obviously need to sell tickets, you need yeah. to have obviously pedigree yep. or... Or you need to want people to either watch you get knocked out or watch you knock someone yeah. out. I, I, when I first time professional, professional, I was boxing on Ricky Atten undercards. I was promoted, promoted by Ricky Atten. I went to a press conference in a, in a suit and a, and a mo, what do they call, Mohican? <laughs> a Mohican on a suit. <laughs> sitting there saying nothing. But it got attention on yeah, me. Yeah. Like, I understood the game back then, but I got a sort of beaten army by, by, <laughs> by people around me who were saying, Joe Lewis never used to drink protein shakes yeah, yeah. like that. Bollocks, yeah, because they weren't on the round. Yeah. Jory would be if they were about now, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could have done with it. <laughs> but I think, you know what frustrates me as well? Like, I, I speak to, I've spoken to loads of boxers who are fucking funny people or, you know, like, you get in a conversation with it's great, yeah. but do you never see it? No. Do you know what I mean? We're and not no, trained that yeah, way. Yeah. No yeah. one wants, like, you, you see a camera and they don't, but I think you're quite different. I think that we've spoke about it a few times, but that Galahad week where they did the fight camp and, I think it was in Bellevue and someone else. They had like the couches outside, and you were on it. And yeah, that's stuff good. Stuff like that. Yeah. That's good because it's not as your camping. Yeah, it's it's like yeah. let's see what you're about. Do you know what I mean? Let's yeah. have a laugh with you. That's my in boxing and Eddie here, no, because he's got a new. He, he, Eddie's old, isn't he? But yeah, yeah. he's got he's got a young. He's got a. <laughs> you think he was young, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think he's, he's clever, got a young like, mentality. Mm. Very smart, and he's he's always up to date. I spoke at at the at the. Um, what was it? What, the media day, the seven weeks before it, I was speak. I met him, um, lucky enough to be in Barry Inn, a proper gentleman he was, and he was telling me the way it was, and he said, "I don't want, I don't need to be in boxing now. I give it to Eddie, Eddie to do it. No one wants to listen to an old fart like me." And part of me is looking, I'm going, but "You're Barry Inn, not me. Yeah, we we awesome. respect you. I respect him. You might respect him as a boxing fan. All the boxers are going to respect him for what he's achieved in the sport. But the suit was." Barry understood the game. No one wants to listen to an old fart mm. doing the olden olden day things. They want to listen to Eddie. That's yeah. why we all listen to Eddie in and we don't listen to Frank Warren. Mm. No disrespect to Frank Warren, but it's the it's truth. Fact, eh? you know what it's, I mean? It is fact. We're more likely to listen to Frank's lad, George. If George and Francis have more charisma, we li- we love to listen mm. to them, won't we? You know what I mean? We, we but but we, we don't be listening to mm. Eddie Ayn and that's why sometimes he might get a bit bitter and think what the fuck this young kid coming in but the mm. truth is he's with it he's with the kids he I mean, when he was doing all that no context hair and stuff and every interview he was doing like a little bit of a sound bite that would get clipped up and put on Twitter there was a reason he was getting behind it he was like yeah, yeah because yeah. you've now got like 14 and 15 year olds running up to you in London going oh I can have a selfie yes. and then you go to him yeah I've got a shot on there and yeah. it, it's I think sometimes as much as I love it Boxing does act as its own worst enemy because it's like this yep. old boys club thing of like you know this yeah. we're, we're glad yeah. of, glad of, and you are you're a freak you're yeah. a freaks like yeah. there's only a couple of people who were ever born that could do what you do but yep. I think this is a little bit of a wake up call and I think things like what I'm I love MMA and what the UFC do in terms of building characters I think it's a little bit of a wake up call yep. to be like we don't have to wait for a promoter to build our character you don't yep. have to wait for a promoter yep. to tell everyone how great I am. I'll yeah. invest in myself. I'll yeah. invest in YouTube and yeah. whatever it might be, and, and you get opportunities that way. Yeah, it's the, well they're doing more anti MMA and the YouTube fighters. They're doing more. Mm. They're not training. They're not. It takes away. It does take away from you. If you if you you yeah. set your day around. You set your day around. I said today I was going to start my YouTube channel tonight. I had a few things messed around. I didn't start it today, but I, only because I knew me training my hard session was going to be tonight. You know what I mean? If you do that every day, you can't do that every day. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't live the life on YouTube because it's hard work and it takes a lot of area and it's a distraction and stuff like that. So, YouTube fighters, they're never going to be pro fighters, MMA fighters. Um, they're doing it, aren't they? They're doing They're putting the work in. They're doing it more than fighters. Mm. So, I think what I think the, the bit where, in my opinion, where people should smash it is it's the in between phases. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's the it's once the fight ends. I think Paddy does it really well. Yeah. Paddy yeah. Pimlet does yeah. it great, like whether people like him, dislike him or whatever, he does it really well because he's not he's no longer coming across as Paddy the fighter. Yeah. If you sit and watch Paddy's podcast, you wouldn't even believe he was an MMA fighter. 
because he's just sitting there. His his demeanor is completely <laughs> different. He's like yeah. asking funny questions or whatever. Yeah. But then the, I guess the the flick switches and he goes back into camp and he does. He becomes like Paddy. who just shouts at everyone. Yeah. But it, yeah. like I think if you invest in that middle bit, where you know what people I know families and all that stuff. But I think that's the bit where because then people are looking forward to your next fight. Yeah, he's got a good Ali. I think that um, the culture inside boxing is that we have our fight, we get our money, and we go and, I would just say, be selfish, you know, like, mm. selfish lifestyle, go and go to parties, go and fighters think about, like, getting birds, parties, mm. holidays. It doesn't work, you know what I mean? No. And you're seeing these, these people who are willing to work as a professional... Um, I would you call it? Would you like a professional media man as well? Mm. You've got it's a package now, isn't yeah. it? It's it's you're essentially. I think the way you have to get to it is like you have to see yourself as a business, don't you? Yeah. And like yeah. no other business in the world takes six weeks off when they've had a, when they've had. A, I'm not saying yeah. like you obviously have to physically take time off to allow things to yeah. heal and stuff yeah. like that. But once, like for example, once the fight's done. I think now the mentality is more around okay i'm not physically fighting or training yeah. but what am i doing yeah. to put myself in a better position to get paid more yeah the next fight you know a what lot I mean? of sports have to do yeah. they could look at the bodybuilding they have to do they have to stay in shape all the way all the way around because they have to do events tour yeah. events to get just to get paid i mean i think we're paddy paddy the body you saying there and molly they 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 may keep themselves relevant yeah that's yeah. why boxers drift off that's why i drift off because I come back. You, I come back in a fight. You see me fight week, and then I'll just drift, drift off again because I always looked at Marvin Agler, and that's yeah. the way it should be done. But that's the culture. But they keep themselves relevant. But there's no way Paddy, Paddy Pimlet and Molly wake up and go, "Yes, YouTube day. We're gonna have no. loads of fun." You go, "Oh fuck's sake, gotta go and do my YouTube today." To bollocks, you know what I mean? Yeah. I have to go and do it. And it's just hard work that they're mm. putting in. You've got to take your ass off to them because you might see them smiling on the camera. So I'm this the other day in my bed about like. <laughs> He must see me change when a camera comes on. Yeah, I'm not I'm this me. person. When, when I, we all have an image, don't yeah, we? We yeah, all have yeah. an image. When yeah. I go home, I just like him. Um, <laughs> I just look at him. Well, you sitting in the house now, George. I'd be looking at my phone. <laughs> Get out. Blanking, yeah. I wouldn't even be speaking to you. <laughs> Why are you in I'd, be te- I'd be texting you on the other couch. <laughs> and we all have a media image, don't we? So you just got to send it on when the camera yeah. comes no, on. But it takes a lot of yeah, you know. You do, but I think the way the world's changing, I think it's not... Look, not everyone has to do it, but there has to be an acceptance, an acceptance that it exists. Yes. There has to be an acceptance that yep. if I do want to get yeah. where I need to be, then I have to get on board. Yeah. It? Don't you be complaining like for me? Don't be complain, complaining for the people getting yeah, yeah. more attention than you. Or someone just happens to get a title shot from fucking fifteen. Yeah. But as you know, has been doing all these other stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's that's where that's i think that's where boxing's at anyway but we've had a good start of the year though in terms of smith eubank and then yes. last weekend we have better be every yard did you what did you think of smith eubank as you say you thought smith would win well i thought smith would win i thought he'd be too cute because just because i know boxing and i know how yeah. good he is he's so smart intelligent there's no way a fighter can put his hands over his face and walk forward like liam smith if there's not brains and no, no. behind it without him being slurring his words and being um Punch them like me. <laughs> There's no way you can do that. You're so intelligent and smart. Um, it's only been Canelo really who could yeah. who could dominantly over overpower him. You know what I mean? And there's questions around Canelo wasn't he in in terms of like drugs. Yeah. Mm. You said it. Yeah, you won't have but, to say it like uh, that. <laughs> so there's been questions around. So like we can see that it he's not a physical fighter. Because his body doesn't say he is. No, no. He's not. Sh- he's not ripped up like a like a like a fighter you would assume they are. But he's got some like lovely, like mm. smart brain. Behind Fundamentals his work. is brilliant, yeah. isn't he? I mean, like, I think again, Twitter. I think someone I seen someone one time going basic. I think Paul actually replied to it. it was like, <laughs> "What are you fucking on about?" But I think you know the the theory that he was basic. But that's why I predict him to win because yeah. I think if you look at anything that Chris Eubank Junior has done in the past. Any time that somebody has solid fundamentals, Billy Joe Saunders, yeah. George Groves, Liam, yeah, he does struggle because Chris Eubanks an incredible athlete. Yeah. You know, he, f- when we're talking about, he, he probably had a life of luxury waiting for him, but no one can no one can doubt his balls or his fucking willingness to fight. No. But I think when it comes down to actual fundamentals that sort of yeah. get you where you need to be, I don't think he can handle it, and I think that's yeah. why I had Liam the favourite. I didn't predict. That he'd knock him out in four rounds, like I didn't. No, I, I didn't. Never. I don't think anyone would have seen I that. I didn't but. watch the fight, George. I didn't watch it. I listened on the radio. Mm. I was jogging. I was running. Was he? Yeah. yeah. I was in the. Um, I was actually there, and 
I think the one the atmosphere was unbelievable. But I think straight away you could there was a point in like I think it was round two, um, and Liam actually got a bit of a bollocking from Joe McNally, but Liam had a smile. He was smiling as he walked back to England. I know he does that a yeah. lot, but it was almost like he was looking as, as if to say like. You are what I expected you to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, like the big beast that I thought might come was not there, and then yeah. that's where his confidence obviously came from. And then he obviously the finish is brilliant, like. But yeah, I think like also what 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 beef he's got is that like some fighters I've been in a fight so many times and got through on natural fighting ability alone. So like in the schoolyards as a kid. You just know beefy he's being able to fight. Mm. Just naturally. Oh yeah, just know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like on Sunday, Sunday league football, he's probably just. Well, I've never lost a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Where, like, if you bank on a Sunday League football fight, you'd probably get his head kicked. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Bloody in the ring because yeah. he's an athlete. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah. physically more you, but then, like, on the football, gets smacked everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <Smacked. just> <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. It's just like the, yeah. the, the ability to fight. It's just natural to some people. I'm not saying, I'm not taking away his work ethic or the, the hours he's spent, spent training. But like you can just tell he's natural, natural yeah. his brains, the brains that goes into it. Some people have got a better brain. Yeah, just got a better, better brain. You know I think I, mean? I think Liam um, has always sort of been sort of boxed as this like fighter, hasn't he? Do you know, yeah. I know like he, he is a, he looks like a bit of a nasty guy sometimes. But yeah. I think when you don't really understand it, or when certain people don't understand it, you take away from his ability. Like yeah. you don't do yeah. what he's done, yeah. and you don't fight no. where he's fought, and no. you know. He could Liam, box, you know. Yeah, he exactly. could box if he wanted to. Exactly. He, could, he could stand there, mm. technical boxer. Well, you look at the Liam Williams fight. I know Liam Williams has gone on and been beat by Eubank, but at that time, the, all they were saying was that, oh, Liam Smith's just going to fight me. And he eventually just boxed him and then, and then yeah. did hurt him. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I think yeah. he's just one of them people, I think people who don't understand look at him and think, I could beat him. He looks yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. then it's it looks a different like he's ball. standing there yeah, yeah. with his hands on his head. Yeah. But it's a, it's a different ball game once you fight him. And I think now, thankfully, after he beats, um, obviously the fight with Fowler, Jesse Vargas and now Eubank I think yeah. people are finally going and going a minute he might be world class <laughs> yeah it's a mad thing and it's with, with, with boxing fans as well because they don't give you the credit until it's like yeah yeah sort of a bit too late like even even Eubank the, the, the week before I remember reading the comments thinking wow am I just being a biased scouser here uh, behind yeah. Beefy because no one has him to win like yeah. no one gave him a chance I'm sure he was the better underdog as well I'm sure he had that as well from right or wrong mm. yeah. but after a fight it was like he, Eubank's finished. The yeah. same people are writing him. There's no way to make him win mm. and saying Eubank's finished. It's Gareth crazy. A. Davis, who's a fucking plonker. I I've never even met him, but I'm just going to say he is because of the stuff I read that he writes. And he put he's, his career's in tatters. Where's he going? And I'm thinking, mate, he's just sold Mad. out the MEN Arena. I've just said before, boxing not sold out anyway. Yeah. On pay per view against Liam Smith, a former world champion, and got beat. All right, he got stopped, but. His career's not in tatters. Yeah. There's a rematch. Yeah. There's going up to 168. Yeah. There's loads of things he can do. Yeah. Why are we so, so he's not dying to just go yeah. get him out? He's so he's not a good fighter now. Yeah, that, but, that, but that's yeah. that's what it is. But what annoys me is, and that's why I call Gareth A. Davis a plonker, is because he's a, a big voice in boxing. He's got column inches in like the Telegraph, and he's that's always it. on IFL TV. And th this is what people are listening to, and like. What you don't understand, I know what you're trying to do is get your video to have a hundred k. I understand yeah. that's what he's trying to do, but yeah. what you're doing is like developing this culture of you can't lose. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, we not everyone's Mayweather. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it's a loss can it. be as you know yeah. we spoke about when we done the podcast. Sometimes a loss is the best thing that happens to you because I don't remember me wins. That's what I mean, yeah. and you you know like you change things and you get better, and you you know you might get a you know better coach or whatever, yeah. like. And that's what I think again. Where MMA thrives because in MMA, a loss truly means fuck all. Yeah, it's like, it right on the it's like you know, it just develops a narrative for you to come back. And I think yeah. the the more voices who are at the top of the sport somehow who are going, oh, he's finished. And just thinking you you hate in the sport. Yeah, because we need yeah. Eubank. Eubank right, yeah. sells out things. Yeah. We need them to fight. Yeah, and by the way, how did he know? How do you know he's finished? What what gives you that? As a, as like Garrett there. How does he know a fight is finished? Yeah. Because he doesn't even know what it takes to be in a position to fight in the first place. Exactly. So it, what what made a fighter? He doesn't understand. So what finishes a mm. fighter? He still doesn't understand. He doesn't understand the mindset behind it. So a lot of these these the outlets, the YouTube outlets, boxing ones, they've sold out a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to see it as a fighter because everyone who comes into the sport, 
they go into boxing gyms, they go around changing rooms, and they say, yeah, can I have two minutes? Because I wanted to um, start doing this thing where I give these fighters um, some um, views and, mm. and get, build the profile of these fighters. That's how they all start. I've seen every one of them come through. Of course you can, mate, because that's what fighters are like. Yeah. It benefits you, it benefits me, of course you can. I've never seen a fighter say no. Yeah. Know what I mean? But like go to a football pitch and stand outside and yeah. have a two minute interview. Uh, you get fucking you get fucking dragged away, you <laughs> know what I mean? You physically non guard come and get yeah. <laughs> get your fucking quickie bag as well, you non <laughs> So in the change room, yeah, of course you can, mate. Two minutes, blah blah blah. They, they, get, they go from having him on, they get a YouTube channel, they get someone else on, they get a little bit bigger. Yeah. They get the bigger they get, and then the sponsors come on board. The the further away they go from these fighters who they started out to give their um, yeah. And I understand as a business you've got to grow with where you're growing, but a lot of them come in with this fucking same bollocks. They just come in with it and say, "I want to be the next IFL, so please yeah. give me an interview." Yeah. That's it, and we say yes, yeah, still. Just know be I mean? honest, yeah. But they like the fighters mm. that, and that's how they grow and grow and grow. Mm. But now what happens is. They've seen where the views are because they're in a business of views. I get it. I understand. You've got to fucking obviously you've just got to tend to your business to get it. But now where the views are, and these idiots who've never boxed, yeah, who who are going mad, who are doing mad things, who've got like pink haircuts and all weird stuff, they're getting views because they're acting yeah. they're acting out of character. Just this media image. Mm. Like if I, if I start acting like that, I'm a bellend, aren't I? Yeah. If you start acting like that, you're a bellend. It's mad mm. because. Maybe maybe we need to be. Do you need to be a balance to be successful? Yeah. I, mean, I think what it is is like again again what most people get incorrect is you can have an opinion. You can say, I don't think Chris Eubank Junior will win another world title. Yeah, you can have an opinion. Not wrong with and that, is the, yeah. You are entitled to your opinion, yeah. however harsh or whatever people think it is. Ultimately, you can have your yeah. opinion, yeah. but you can't tell another man or another female. You, you're done. You're done in this career because I said like yeah, you I'm can't. Sure do, like, times by himself. But again, yeah. if if that headline would have said Gareth A. Davis says Chris Eubank Jr. will never become a world champion. Yeah. How many times have you seen that? No, no one's going to click on it. Yeah. Chris, Gareth A. Davis says yeah. Chris Eubank Jr. is in ta- uh, careers in tatters. You're like, why? Let me have a look. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it, I guess it, it's clever, yeah. Martin. But I, I would never do it. I mean, I I comment on boxing every day in my life on whether yeah. it be social media. But I would never sit there and say. Um, you're finished or even your crap like, yeah. like do you think the bold opinions is because they, they're so out of touch do you think that it never gets to the fighter pretty much yeah but I, th- I also think it's like I also think it's an absolute there's certain people in boxing I think who would rather be relevant for being stupid than not be relevant at all do you know what I mean they'd That's rather the hold on to the fact that they get accreditation for all these shows That's a good shout that, yeah. rather than actually because they'd never get a place if they they'd never be accepted that if they person. themselves, yeah. Yeah, wow. You know I mean? Never thought of it like that. Because, like, if they just give their boxing opinion because it's usually redundant, they'd never get anywhere. Wow, so they go, I'll, yeah. just be a, I'll just be a knob and then I'll get in. <laughs> and then I can tell everyone I cover boxing, me. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what me and you do right now. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's give me yeah. a fucking different insight. That mm. that's really proper different insight. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's sad, but I, I ultimately think that's where that's where people are. At. Wow. I've heard so many times that people you're done, you're finished. Mm. Never, never know one personally. Like, but yeah. like even when the school teachers say to me, you're not gonna do it. I never didn't take their opinion because I knew they had nothing to do with boxing. Yeah, they didn't know boxing, so why would I take opinion of someone who doesn't know boxing? And now. We also, you were saying the soapbox before, boxers do that thing, I see it, and I do it myself sometimes, where you haven't boxed, so your opinion's valid, invalid, I don't, I don't mean that, but when I'm saying that, but boxers can be sometimes tired everyone with the same brush, yeah, yeah. you can say yeah. that, you see it on social media, and you can resort to it sometimes, like, how, how do you know, you've never mm. fucking been punched, you know what I mean, yeah. how do you know what it's like to make weight, you fat, yeah. or... Not as it, not I mean, just, just yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just where you think if you are making weight, how do you know what it's like to make weight? You're telling me how to cut two pounds at the end, mm. but you're you've always been overweight. It's hard, it's hard for me to take advice off you if that mm. makes sense. But a lot of fighters do that where you're in, invalid because you've never had to fight. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think the YouTube fighters do that, do they? No, I think the, there's it also it's a two way street that I think I think if you come at if your opinion is, for example, if I was sat across to you and my opinion was fucking Lomachenko needs to move his feet when he fucking throws a jab or something then yeah. I understand where people go lad you've never ever ever and you never will be yeah. on that level shut yeah. your mouth yeah. but 
I think what boxers sometimes get wrong is when someone gives an opinion from a fan side or a media side and they say, yes. I think it's this way, rather than going, actually, you yeah. might have a point. Not, you, you know, yeah. You're not gospel, but you might have a point. Yeah. I'm going to use it. They go, shut up. Yeah. How, how would you know? Because there's another aspect to my career and yeah. it doesn't involve me. It yeah, involves yeah. the media and how I'm viewed. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I need to take, I need to understand how that mm. works because I need to play that game as well, don't yeah. I? I think you need to be emotional. I think boxers, anyone in individual sport, your life is that ring. Like, yeah. you don't, like, if, for example, if you went to fight fucking Francis and Ganu as a boxer, you know, and he was coming across the boxing, you'd be like, ah, oh, fucking man, I might catch him. Do you know what I mean? And boxers yeah. should should think like that, and they think yeah, yeah, no yeah. one will ever beat me. No, I'm I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna yeah. win, and that's that's why you're essentially why you're a boxer. But yeah. I think when you take when someone offers an opinion that doesn't have emotion attached, I think it's hard to accept. And it? it's like, of course, yeah. you know, it's like don't tell me that. Yeah. But I think that's yeah. that's where it, it gets tough. But also, you can have an opinion without saying, you know, telling Lomachenko, Lomachenko to throw a fucking left hook <laughs> because some people yeah. do do that on yeah. Twitter as well. Yeah. But. No, lad, you know what? I won't. Um, I've, I've loved this. It's been brilliant. Um, we got through a lot. <laughs> from everything from <laughs> Wood vs. Lara to nonsense. I'm back again, but we'll definitely do it again soon, mate. And um, yeah, thanks for your time. Thank you. Ta, lad.